Hello everyone, today is a very exciting day. My father and I are going to go see Fast and Furious 9, aka F9, at our local IMAX. This will be our first theater experience since February of 2020. The last film my father and I saw was 1917 on February 12th of 2020. And as you know, the COVID pandemic changed everything last year in the year of 2020. We're slowly starting to return to normalcy. My father wanted to have his bucket of popcorn and I, getting impatient, kind of wanted to see a movie on the big screen, so we figured we'd go see F9. And also, we're all vaccinated in the family, so why not? This is very exciting. I did not think I would experience another film in the cinema after last year. And for health reasons, I decided not to go to the theater at all last year. With the pandemic, I didn't go see Tenet. I mostly stayed with digital exclusives or on-demand rentals. So this is our first cinematic experience going back in a post-COVID world. And we're still not entirely out of it yet, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. To be honest, I checked out of Fast and Furious after Furious 7. I thought that's where they should have ended the series. This film series, this saga, jumped the shark a long time ago, so I'm not going in for a serious Oscar movie. I'm going in to have fun and see something entertaining on the big screen. Again, you can follow me at Fred Film Fanatic on Instagram, and this vlog will be my quick reaction to being back at the cinemas, as well as my brief thoughts on F9. So here we are at an AMC cinema. Okay, so here we are at our first cinematic experience post COVID and IMAX Fast and Furious 9. It feels good to be back. Got it in there? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It slipped. Okay, everyone. That was Fast and Furious 9. Overall, it was interesting being back at the cinema. Of course, you had your stupid assholes who were obnoxious. You had people on cell phones. We had people yawning. And a lot of people, but luckily there wasn't too many annoying people. There was no kid kicking the back of my seat this time, so that was good. Uh, overall, I like the movie. Uh, you know, I, I like I said earlier, I kind of checked out of Fast and Furious after 7. I thought after Paul Walker passed away, they should have just ended the series. But I did think this was a huge improvement over Hobbs and Shaw. And maybe right there with Fate of the Furious. There is parts of this movie that I really, really, really loved. There are other parts that were, no pun intended, ludicrous. I mean... Forget street racing. We're freaking doing space now. We're having car magnets. Oh, and let's not forget Vin Diesel driving off a cliff and using a rope of a broken bridge as a zip line. Overall, I think this almost feels like a superhero universe in itself. This almost feels like a superhero, like Marvel franchise now. Anyway, we got this Fast and Furious bucket driving back home yeah Tyrese Gibson's character is like we're invincible there's something up we're not just lucky and I think that's part of the problem it's not like the old action movies of the 80s and 90s where when somebody was in a car crash or jumped somewhere they would get hurt I don't know if you guys remember Indiana Jones like when he was in the back of a truck he was bleeding he had bruises and scrapes and everybody here is just like a Looney Tunes cartoon at this rate sons of my eyes but uh, I did like it. The beginning had a flashback of Dominic Toretto's father, like uh, the story he told Brian O'Connor in the first one. And we had like an early 90s Universal logo. I thought that was cool. I love the flashback stuff. I thought this film could have used way more John Cena as Jacob Toretto. That's Dominic Toretto's younger brother. There are certain moments right when it was getting really good, it just got outlandish and the flow of it was off. But I did some research and it has a different writer. 
But I did love Justin Lin's direction. You did have a lot of green screen, but he brought back in some sequences real cars and real chases. It's just, I think, Fast and Furious, like any other franchise, when it goes on so long, you start to become a self-parody of yourself or a caricature of yourself. And it's happened to some of the best horror franchises, like Nightmare on Elm Street, if you see how those films started out versus how they ended. I think the next one should be the last Fast and Furious. I said they were just going to do two more. I think they need to end it on a high and kind of go back to its roots. But this did one thing that I thought the other one should have done is focus more on Dominic Toretto. And we do get some, to, uh, some hints to Brian O'Connor, Paul Walker's character. But overall, I mean, I wasn't expecting an Oscar-worthy movie. A lot of people were like, this killed the franchise and jumped the shark. It was stupid. But granted, it was stupid in the last two movies, too, and even to a degree, Furious 7. I mean, just look at that Dubai scene where they crash a car, go 0 to 100 in a room, and then crash through not one, but two buildings. This series jumped the shark a long time ago. It's kind of hard to believe that it's been going on 20 years and that it started with, like, illegal street racing. We went from illegal street racing to, like, a poor man's Mission Impossible. <laughs> anyway, overall, I thought it was an entertaining film. I'm just trying to decide if I like it more than Mortal Kombat. I, there are certain moments I like better than Mortal Kombat, but overall I think the movie's kind of weak, even though there's moments that are just outstanding. Moments that really stand out. I have mixed feelings on it. It is what it is. It's a popcorn flick. So if you see it on HBO or somewhere or TNT, it'd be good to watch, but don't expect <laughs> don't expect the Godfather or Citizen Kane over here. But uh, overall, I liked it. It was entertaining, and it was quite the experience being back in the cinema after more than a year really I don't miss the people but I do miss the cinematic experience if that makes sense although people if you're gonna be on your damn cell phone the whole movie sit your ass at home and wa look at your cell phone when you're watching HBO Max seriously like fuck off and stay at home <laughs> like seriously do us all a favor but uh, besides that uh, it was long but we saw a Jurassic World teaser looked interesting. I don't know what to think. It started like, I think in the Jurassic period, and then it went to present day, so you're going to have dinosaurs rule the earth. Uh, the only thing I was disappointed at in the IMAX feature we went to is that we didn't see the Halloween Kills teaser, but we did see Snake Eyes. We saw M. Night Shyamalan's movie, Old, that looked wicked, and other stuff. Of course, he had 30 minutes worth of previews, but uh, what can I say? It's good to be back, and yeah, that's our brief experience at the movies in this summer heat.